can score from play but he's got to uh, get a bit of help which he does from Barry Clark now that's ambitious by Barry Clark but it's beautifully judged beautifully flighted great score by Barry Clark for loud Mark Stanfield now Simon Gerrard has gone uh, loose on the right but Seamus O'Hanlon cuts infield great run by Seamus O'Hanlon can he crown it with the point yeah Great drive by Darren Fay for Graham Garrity. Pulled on by Aaron Hoy. Won by Darren Fay. Now the idea was good by Mark Stanfield, but Paddy Reynolds read it better than uh, anybody on the low side. John Cullinan's drive. But with the corner forwards played out, playing out around midfield, it's easier for the loud backs. And then Alan Page overholds. Donald Curtis, quickly to Trevor Giles. Good ball to Nigel Crawford. One man who can score and does. Five points to four, now the leaders, but Mead doing better in the 33rd minute of the first half. Ray McGee, busy and effective. John Cullinan on, good ball to Evan Kelly. Getting inside John Neary, going for the equaliser, Evan Kelly. Two minutes to half time. <laughs> to Christy Grimes. Now Loud led three minutes ago by two points. Now they're level. Mark O'Reilly's lost it. Loud bid to get the lead back. And they do. Coming up to half time. J.P. Rooney out of it early on because the ball didn't run his way. Now he's got his chance and taken it. 35 minutes plus whatever time will be added on and even extra time if necessary to decide who moves on and who goes out of the 2002 Football Championship. Six points apiece as Barry Clark tries to give uh, Louth back the lead. Now it's dropping dangerously. Great catch in front of the goal, and in by Ali McDonald in 25 seconds. As it dropped, Ali McDonald pounced. Me, they're in big, big trouble. Ken Riley beaten to it by Nigel Crawford. Paul Shanky there for me. They need a score. Graham Garrity against Aaron Hoy. Oh, nice play by Garrity, but it's just gone wide. But that is Mee's fourth wide of the second half. Now Nigel Nestor. Guess Mee's going again. Now there's a man loose inside. That man is Ali Murphy. He slips it to the left. And the goal! Richie Key the scorer. Ali Murphy on selfish. Dangerous ball in. Murphy slipped it to the side. It was the right thing to do. And Richie Keeley did the rest. Cormac Murphy for me. To Trevor Giles on the 45 metre line. Good run through by Hank Trainer. From the defence. It paid off. Well found by Trevor Giles. Good score. They're level again. Won seven apiece. Primus O'Hanlon. Christy Grimes gets a great ball in. Goes for the goal. What a score. The long ball twice to J.P. Rooney. A devastating finish. Now David Brennan. Oh, very good ball by David Brennan to Mark Stanfield. Now the leaders by two points with only eight minutes to go. It's now a three-point lead. Two eight to one eight. It's Wait looking close. good for Loud. Looks for Trevor Giles. Now that could be a costly step. But is there two scores in me, including a big one? Nigel Crawford shakes off a challenge from John Neary. Good ball. Goes for another goal. Me get one goal. A point in it now. Thanks to Richie Keeley. His second goal of the game. 
Now, referee Brendan O'Gorman has to add on some more time because we had two stoppages in the three allotted to the added on. As Ollie Murphy comes forward to save the game for me. Great ball in. Oh! Unbelievable scenes in Navan. But you'd better believe them because Graham Garrity and me have saved the day. And Ollie Murphy it was who made the difference with a goal that gave me hope and by working through for a goal that won it sensationally for me. You can't beat them. They're never down for drama, tension, excitement and finishes that you could hardly script. Look to me as a huge crowd did in a packed Port Palton. Who said there's no life in the qualifiers? Who said the life was seeping out of me? The final score at Navan, made 3-8, now 2-9. It was looking like it was going to be their day, you know, and especially kicking down towards Domahony's end in the second half. That's where all the scores usually go in. In this pitch, we know that ourselves, it's our home pitch. But uh, we just kept plugging away, you know. Obviously, we were dead and buried last week and we couldn't get back, but this week, we came back and we showed there's still plenty of fighting spirit there. I suppose the big thing, the big thing for us today, Jim, was from sort of a managerial point of view or management point of view or somebody who's been lucky enough to be involved with a tremendous bunch of guys. The integrity of the lads not to stop. I suppose after we were beaten in the All-Ireland Final and after we were beaten last Sunday by Dublin, um, it was something maybe the lads might have questioned themselves and so on. And today things seem to be going against us, seem to be going against us in a big way. And it was that never say die, that faith in themselves, that faith in each other, um, that until the final whistle goes, you don't stop. And two miracle goals. And that's, you know, last Sunday, you know, Richie was coming off and he felt so down. He had come on the field and he came off the field against Dublin. And my God, what a performance of Richie Keeley out there today. But full credit to Loud. If I was a Loud man today, my heart would be broken. Everything, the gods were, were nearly like against them. But that's football, and it's a, it's a, it's a cruel, it can be a cruel game as well as a wonderful game. Yeah, well, as you heard there yourself, even Meath people feel that Loud probably deserved that one last night. And Tony Davis, that was also the view of Colin O'Rourke, who was with us in our live programme this afternoon. We were chatting about this, and he said, look, you know, he said it was robbery, basically. Yeah, it was, but who, who, what better robbers in the country than Meath? I think they have everybody else's heart broken as well, so yeah. Loud aren't alone in that fact, you know. They just never give up. It's just something that's built into them. Now, I was wondering last Sunday in Dublin, were they going to come back? And they did make a bit of a revival, but Dublin got that all-important goal. You can never write off Meath. They're always going to be there. But there is a hangover from last year and Kerry still have that hangover over True, as well yeah. they both have and there's a certain fragileness about both teams that they haven't recovered yet yeah. now certainly they won today it depends on the draw tonight to see how what kind of draw they'll get in the next round the same with Kerry so they have time on their side to regroup to get their energies right to get Ollie Murphy back to the kind of firing way where as he was before but you have to feel sorry for Lode Lode are an excellent team no, in Leinster it's very hard to win. If they were in Munster or in Connacht, they'd be yeah. one of the top teams. Yeah. It's very hard for them in Leinster because there's so, much, so many good teams. But the great credit due to Lowe, but Meath are never beaten. They're yeah. never beaten. Well, now we come to the football qualifying draw that Tony mentioned there. Two draws tonight, in actual fact. The hurling is in a little bit later on.